Buenas noches. All right, we have Latinos and Spanish speaking people and future Spanish speakers in the house. I'm honored truly to be on this stage tonight in such great company. And I want to take this opportunity to talk to you today about civil rights. The legacy of the civil rights movement would not be part of our collective memories had it not been for the role of the media. In 2005, on the 40th anniversary of the signing of the Voting Rights Act and the 50th anniversary of the Montgomery boycott, the Honorable U.S. Representative John Lewis of Georgia took the floor and acknowledged the vital role that the press played in the civil rights movement, saying that without the media, the civil rights movement would have been a bird without wings. He also added that had it not been for the courage, strength, and integrity of print and broadcast journalists that held a mirror image for our society to see, that without a free press, this nation would not have been able to become a beacon of justice and equality that inspired men, women, and children to build a better world. And while we still have journalists, or many journalists, with courage, strength, and integrity, more often than not, we do not own our own mirrors. Rather, the reflections that we see are part of the house of mirrors that big media have built to exaggerate, diminish, and distort our legacies. This is why we are at war both abroad and at home. This is how immigrants have been criminalized. This is how New Orleans has been forgotten, how brown people have become terrorists. This is why you're either with us or against us. This is how the gravity of global warming has been diminished. This is how anti-gay, racist, classist, and misogynistic media subliminally and explicitly makes its way into our collective psyche. What will our legacy be like 40 years from now if we cannot tell the American story? If we cannot hold a mirror image for our society to see, what will our children remember? Who will their heroes be? Everyday heroes in communities throughout the country, heroes are working tirelessly to ensure that their communities craft their own legacies. Heroes such as those found in Imocali, Florida, who have used their radio station, Radio Conciencia, to report on the human rights violations of farm workers that in turn fueled their victories against Taco Bell, McDonald's, and most recently, Burger King. Heroes such as those found in the Native nations who are working hard to ensure that Native American media is strengthened so that they can retain their ability to receive, embrace, and pass on their own stories. On the south side of Chicago, there's a small community radio station of which I have the pride and joy of managing called Radio Arte. It is a Mexican-owned, bilingual, youth-driven radio station that operates on the premise of being a first voice institution for our community. Do you all know what happens when young people are given a platform to speak? They become leaders. They talk about the things that big media thinks that they are not interested in talking about. They talk about the war, they talk about politics, they talk about media reform, and yes, they talk about sex. <laughs> However, they don't sensationalize it in the way that big media does. They are the ones that hold the mirror for our society to see. We must build on this momentum, on this drive, and while we can't necessarily beat big media today, we can be the media and combine our voices when there are attempts to mute them. One example of the silencing of voices is taking place here in Minnesota and in cities throughout the country. In Minneapolis and St. Paul, over 25 groups applied for low power FM radio stations. But because big broadcasters and NPR didn't want competition, none of these church, immigrants, and community groups will have their voices heard. Even public radio, whose mission it is to reflect the diversity of the American public, is falling short of its commitment. Therefore, we must urge Congress. We must urge Congress so that it passes the Local Community Radio Act and pave the way for more community radio stations in Minneapolis and thousands of other cities to have their voices heard. No more excuses.
We are on the brink of a new civil rights movement. Our young people are creating a new legacy. 40 years from now, we will marvel at how our young people marched and guaranteed the just treatment and legalization of our undocumented immigrants, how we ended the war in Iraq, how we prevented the war in Iran, and how we secure that our media is one that represents us with mirrors of dignity. <laughs> Commissioner Copps made you guys say, yes, we can. And I would be amiss if I didn't point out that this is the slogan that the United Farm Workers used in their struggles. <laughs> now, I am going to say, make you say, yes, we can, but you will say it in Spanish, okay? In Spanish. En español. ¿Cómo se dice si se puede? Let's practice it. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Can we reform the media? Si se puede. Thanks, guys.